We are in the middle of one of the most competitive seasons in recent NASCAR Gander Truck Series history. And as the current pandemic continues to wreak havoc on people's lives across the country, across the globe, businesses being forced to close, businesses choosing to spend their marketing dollars differently, it's been difficult for many teams, not just in the Cup Series or the Xfinity Series, but also in the Gander Truck Series to continue to fund their race teams and their programs. So today our good buddy Jordan Anderson is back to share a little bit of the behind the scenes of what it's like for a smaller truck series team trying to stay competitive in the current NASCAR and worldwide climate. So enjoy my interview I did earlier this morning with fan favorite truck series driver owner Jordan Anderson. How's it going everyone? Welcome to Out of the Groove. This week I'm joined by my good friend and truck series driver team owner Jordan Anderson. How's it going today man? Hey, good, Eric. Good morning, man. How are you? Doing great. I'm just excited. People know that I'm in Tennessee now, so I'm kind of on the road, kind of running and gunning right now. I'm excited for the Bristol All-Star Race, but I'm also excited for uh, Texas this coming weekend. Uh, there's rumors all over the place. I mean, I don't know. Do you have any inside information? Is Texas still happening? Uh, there's speculation everywhere. I got word that uh, we're going to get a little update Tuesday afternoon, so I think we're all moving forward as planned and just kind of seeing what happens there. I don't know if you're going to maybe – see the race moved or maybe without fans i know that they were going to try and get fans there for the cup race on on sunday but uh you know as crazy as everything is now i mean i think we've all kind of come to learn to expect that anything can happen so we're uh we're actually we're very fortunate that we just got done with kentucky we raced there saturday night and got out of there with no damage so we've got uh, a truck to to go to texas if they do it somewhere else we've got a couple trucks in there ready to go so we're just kind of ready to <laughs> fire off wherever we need to go so uh we've we've learned to be prepared for anything so i hope they get in texas has always been one of my more favorite tracks uh that we've been to just because it just suits my my driving style we've always had a lot of great speed there and We've got some exciting stuff we've been working on for that race. So so prayers and fingers that cross that we, uh, yeah. we get that in. Yeah, I know you, speaking of that, I know you have kind of almost a Texas sort of themed truck for this weekend. How did you get three new sponsors involved in one week? Yeah, no, I mean, I've got a lot of great guys that we've been working with uh, over at the Pole Position Magazine. And uh, I worked with them to, to bring that K-Seal sponsorship at Daytona to life. And we kind of wanted to create this idea of a three theme truck. And, and I, I've always worked to try to have sponsors and partners that really complemented each other. You want to be able to have kind of like what JTG has done on the cup side. They've had the Kroger mm -hmm. car with all these partners that complement each other. And, and that's kind of what we've done with this, uh, the race to freedom truck. We've got uh, vault tech on the back bumper, US law shield on the quarter panels and SAR USA on the on the hood. And it's just such a cool partnership because all of these these sponsors really complement one another. So it's uh, it's really cool to, to see that whole thing come to, to reality and put together. And I think it's gonna allow us to really activate a lot because each of those partners really have their own social media channels and you knowing the power of social media and, and mm -hmm. contacting uh you know different niches and demographics and hitting all those different things it's it's going to be cool to hopefully have some new fans following along and watching the uh the truck race this weekend in texas of course and many people watching know this already but for those who don't know you are not just the driver of the three truck but you're also the team owner and so kind of speaking of sponsorships you know with everything as crazy it is as it is right now like how do sponsorships work? How how much more difficult is it to kind of sell partnerships when, you know, just things are different? You know what I'm saying? There aren't fans, there aren't people at the track as much. Like, how does that work? Is that more difficult now? Yeah, you know, I think that it's going to definitely bring a new uh, expectation to what sponsorship is and how these partnerships work and how we activate them. Because, you know, for, for years being the, the team owner, uh, you know, as I would talk to sponsors and put these things together, the big part of it was hospitality and the at track experience you know having sponsors you know reward their their highest performing employer with a, a spot on the pit box or giving a, a trailer tour or going up to a, a suite and doing like a 30 minute q a with with those guys so that experience of coming to the racetrack was always a, a big sell for a sponsorship whether it gave sponsors a way to do b2b at the racetrack or, or bring their vendors or there was all kind of different ways that we really had that experience tied into it and now with people not being able to be at the racetrack we've kind of lost a little bit of that so we've had to get creative uh i think the social media is is huge i mean i don't know how how we would be doing what we do now without 
uh, our social media outlets, you know, videos, more pictures, Snapchat stories, Instagram stories, just trying to put as much out there as possible to, to give fans and sponsors kind of more insight into what's going on since they can't be there. So, uh, you know, one thing that we're going to kind of do that's, that's different is we, we're going to do a Facebook Live uh, for one of our sponsors this Friday uh, evening coming up before the Texas race. We've also done, a, I did this last week, a, a Zoom call, as you and I are on right now, uh, before the race with one of our sponsors. They actually had on a big screen in their uh, break room for all their employees to watch. So that was pretty cool. So just trying to do things that are different. And, um, you know, it's it's a new world for all of us. And we just kind of kind of adapt as we go along in, in NASCAR and FS1 that covers a truck series. They've done a great job and, and kind of adapting to it i guess you could say so it's it's certainly made it a little bit harder for us and there's a lot of companies that are going through tough times with uh you know they've 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 lost sales or they've got hit by this so uh the virus has definitely changed things and and how we go about with our normal business so uh it's much like anything man we just got to keep digging and find partners that fit with us and you know two of our our big partners that we've been really blessed with is the the bomb read automotive group and, and lucas oil Thankfully, those two guys have been able to work through all this and, and you know, people still got to get their car serviced mm-hmm. or buy new cars and they got to buy, you know, oil to keep their cars running. So those two are, they really complement each other, but it's been cool to see that their business ha- hasn't been too affected by all this. And they're able to, in return, keep our, our race team going. Yeah, I know you always think like a team owner, often think like a team owner, but I also want to know uh, kind of Jordan Anderson, the driver what's it like racing without fans in the stands is it a distraction is it just weird like what is that experience like when you're actually getting behind the wheel on race day i miss everybody being there i mean to be honest with you like when you come out for for driver entries on the stage and you hear everybody or you, you take the lap around the racetrack uh, you know the back of the, the truck after intros or just walking from your trailer to pit road seeing people talking to people um you know i, I miss that part of it i mean that's a, a big part for me as a driver I, I love driving. I love getting in that race car and, and going out there and running, but I also love the, the interaction side, being able to see people and talk to people that also share that same enthusiasm because, uh, you know, a lot of times you, you get out there and, and you see fans and you talk to them and, and their energy kind of amps you up just as much. So, you know, when you walk out there for, for the anthem and, and, you know, we're sitting there before the race starts and like you look out like Kentucky this past week and we're sitting there like doing the anthem and you look up and nobody's in the grandstands. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can hear the everything going over the loudspeaker, but it's just a quiet other than that, and it's kind of an eerie feeling. Like it feels like something out of like a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, everything's quiet, nobody's there, like a big giant test session. So I definitely hmm. miss the fans being there, and it does definitely take a little bit out of it not being able to to share that with with the fans that I know that love our sport so much. So hopefully, uh, you know, sometime soon we'll be able to get back to to life uh, as we used to know it before all this happened and and get everybody back at the racetrack with us. Certainly, without a doubt. Uh, have you enjoyed having less, or I guess basically no practice uh, since this whole thing started, or would you like to see NASCAR start to add at least a little bit of practice time back sooner rather than later? Yeah, you know, I personally don't think it's changed the, the product that much. I think it, if anything, has probably hurt our team a little bit. Uh, you know, when we're competing against GMS and Thor Sport and KBM, those guys have such a deep notebook of information and notes, and they've got the, the different sim programs they can run to, to really fine tune their trucks to, to the best of their ability before the race even starts. Um, we've got a baseline setup that we go there with and some notes from the last two years, but a lot of times we just kind of go on the fly, and that kind of hurt us at Kentucky this weekend. We fired off and had a little bit of a chatter in the left front just because the left front right front didn't have the, the sway bar arms loaded as we would have liked we, we had a little bit more uh, saturation in the right front tire and it was kind of giving me a little bit of a vibration just overloading that right front tire and uh, those are things that if you go out there and you run five laps of practice that's a pretty quick and easy change but not when you're in the race and the mm-hmm. flag drops. So, uh, you know, I think it's going to do for a team like mine, we're saving a little bit of money because we're not practicing you know we would Mm -hmm. usually put 50 to 75 miles on our motors so you multiply that by 20 races over the course season that adds up um i would like to see qualifying back but then that again that kind of brings in a whole another dynamic because you're going to drive off and turn one on your qualifying lap and you're going to sail off in there and you're you're not going to lift if you don't have to Mm -hmm. and and i I think for most of us drivers we'd probably put on on the edge a little bit more than we really like to and then you kind of have to have a backup truck if you're going to qualify like that because who mm-hmm. says you know you might get loose and back in the wall well now what so i think it's either either or you either got to bring, bring practice and qualifying back or just keep it as it is and 
unfortunately, we've been on the bad end with our draws, man. Like, yeah. we were 32nd we at Pocono. We were 28th at uh, Kentucky. I think at Homestead, we were like 26. So, um, you know, before this season, like, we har- we would hardly ever qualify outside the top 20. And I don't think we've had a single start in the last four or five races that's been inside the top 20. So, yeah. that, uh, that makes a little bit of a challenge. But, you know, I, I applaud NASCAR for – figuring it out like i said going to the going to adapting really with whatever is is out there and i think they found a pretty good balance that really you know let's say five years from now when when all this is behind us i think the things that nascar is learning now on how to run a race weekend i think it's going to change down the road to make it a little bit quicker to where teams don't have to be at the track for two three four days like we used to we could probably come in the morning of a quick 30 minute practice session qualify race one day show and it's going to save a lot of money for fans and probably give fans a little bit more uh desire like that race at pocono man how cool was that a couple weeks ago where you had trucks in the morning xfinity in the afternoon the cup race after yeah that. like if you could sell that as a as a ticket that could be like a super bowl event for for racing and if you could do that every weekend how many fans are going to say, you know, what, I'm going to go buy a ticket to this race because I'm going to go buy one hotel room. Mm-hmm. I'm going to wake up that morning and it's just going to be a giant day of NASCAR. And I yeah. think that's a pretty cool model if they can figure out how to really dial that in. Yeah, certainly. There are <clears throat> a lot of kind of changes like that that I think will be seen for, for many years to come. And I like the idea of that triple header. That's a huge boost, especially for like the Xfinity and truck guys. Cup is what draws the, the massive crowds most Sundays. And that's a big uh, boost for all series. That's why it was such a shame that Pocono wasn't able to run without fans, even with the rainouts, but that triple header, mm, that would have been awesome. The butt might've gotten a little sore out in those bleachers after a while, but uh, I think most fans would have suffered through it for that kind of, for that kind of racing. But uh Talking about your season a little bit, Jordan, uh, we had you on the show before the season started. And we've done some live stuff since then, so we know we've talked to you since then, but uh, this has been a pretty a crazy season for everybody, but especially for you guys from the great run at Daytona that everyone remembers to uh, to even this last week at Kentucky. You know, Talk about your season a little bit. What is kind of your team's goal this year, especially kind of given where it's at right now? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're in rebound mode right now. We, we had a great start at Daytona. We ran good at Vegas, uh, and we came out of the box. We have been plagued with flat tires for yeah. whatever reason this year like we have like a giant uh magnet i think apparently underneath our truck it just attracts all the debris <laughs> on the racetrack but i mean we, we fired off at at charlotte to to give you an example of like what we've gone through <laughs> turn one lap one at charlotte you remember the big piece or the big deal about kyle bush the the part fell off his truck yeah he was so mad at his crew well you know who the lucky recipient was or and of it that was the number three truck had a flat right rear go down and we lost two laps early on the mm. race and just were able never able to recover we uh we went to homestead after that or atlanta after that and ran good all day and got a uh, little contact uh, another driver hit us and had a flat right front tire go down and uh hit the wall pretty hard in turn three yeah. and pretty much destroyed that truck went to homestead the next week ran top 20 top 15 all day long we had that red flag there at the end with like 11 laps to go and dove off in turn one and they didn't even show it but it was like it was probably one of the hardest hits i've had in a long time because you're going so fast there i just got down the bottom of track and the right front tire blew out Mm -hmm. and uh, she sailed all over the wall and and banged pretty good so uh being able to go to pocono uh last weekend and get that nice solid top 20 again we were in the top 10 at the end of stage two had a flat right rear tire um so I don't know what's going on there, but thankfully we went to Kentucky this past week. We had a really good truck. We ran top 20 all day. We we came in, they had a late caution with like 10 to go uh, before uh, stage two was over, and we came in and made a pretty big swing on making adjustments, thinking that the race was going to go all the way out, and it was going to really play to our favor if, uh, if we went back green at the end of uh, stage two when three started and uh, sure enough the rains came and the strategy bit us a little bit so you know we're, we're still not too bad of a spot we were um, fortunately able to we put a new body on our truck that crashed at atlanta um, we've got one of our other trucks fixed up so just trying to stay ahead because uh, you know, i'm sitting here in my office right now look at our schedule this month and what's leading up in august you know you've got texas next this coming weekend the double header at kansas that's going to oh, yeah. be pretty cool for for the truck series and how about us going to the uh, road course at daytona I'm, <laughs> I'm really i don't know what to expect um uh, it's going to be a wild crap shoot up i've ran a uh, a thunder roadster on that course this hmm. is probably four or five years ago with the nasa series kind of like scca um but with trucks it's going to be wild you're going to see like we're going to pull up on turn three be, and be drafting through through turn three and four on the front stretch so um kind of like you you know you and i were talking about earlier with new schedule 
this how NASCAR is doing thing had, had the virus not happened today or this year, you would never see us going to the road course at Daytona. So mm-hmm. um, it's kind of exciting time for NASCAR fans right now. I mean, this is uh, they talked about the the they wanted to see a shakeup in the schedule. You know, that was the big talk last fall. And I mean, here it is, you know, so it's, yeah. uh, it's exciting. And, and our team is definitely uh, prepping up and getting ready for all this. And we've got a, a pretty good package, uh, you know, for our road course stuff. Got a good short track truck for Gateway, uh, August 30th. Looking forward to that one. That is the the Bomberito 500 weekend, you know, Indy cars racing uh, yeah. later that afternoon after the truck race. So that's our, our sponsor's home mm-hmm. home track there in St. Louis. So, so looking forward to that. But, you know, all in all, our, our team, I feel like we're still in a good spot where we've kind of climbed back in the top 20. And, you know, for the truck series, it may feel like the year's halfway over, but we're only seven races into our schedule still. Yeah. So there's, uh, what is that? That gives us... Uh, I think 16 races left this season so busy. you know we still have a lot of racing left to do and and for us we're focused on getting back to basics and, and getting our season turned around and I'm gonna keep my eyes on the racetrack for all the debris and hopefully no more <laughs> flat tires anytime soon you might, you might actually have to invest in real headlights on the car there so to actually pick everything up <laughs> but uh yeah well I'll be rooting for you I know everyone watching will be uh watching as the rest of the season goes on thank you Jordan for uh, for being on the show this morning and uh good luck with the rest of the season Thanks, man. I appreciate it. And hopefully, uh, you know, you asked me earlier about missing people at the track. Hopefully, uh, you can make it back out the track soon. I know a lot of you guys that uh, watch the show on, on either group, uh, you know, come up and talk to me at the track. So, just want to know, I miss all you guys. I miss seeing everybody. And, and I do appreciate all the, the words of encouragement on Twitter and Instagram. And, and you know, we're going to try and get more creative as, as the season rolls on. So, if any of you guys that are watching want to see anything at the racetrack or want videos or pictures or anything, uh, give me a shout and let me know. And, and we'll do our best to, to deliver. But appreciate you guys. And uh, hope you enjoy All Star this week, man. Have fun up there. That's gonna be fun, yeah. But uh, good luck with the rest of the season, everybody. Get get on a uh, Jordan social media. Do you, I love drivers that are active on social media, and I feel like this day and age we're starting to see people kind of shy away from it. But you don't. You're publishing everything, everything at the track all race weekend long. It's great. Everyone, go give Jordan a follow. But uh, thanks, man. Thanks, Eric. Have a good time. See you, man. There you have it, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. And again, a huge thank you to Jordan Anderson for being on the show once again. Be sure to follow him on Twitter. All of his social medias are going to be down in the description below. Give him a follow and be sure to root for him the rest of the season. As for me, you can always follow me on Twitter. Subscribe if you are new. And of course, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. It's thanks to all of your support that I'm able to do interviews like this and continue uploading almost regularly, even when I'm out of town. I'll be at Bristol in just a couple days as we talked about in that interview. I'll be doing a video as well, and it's going to be a lot of fun. It would not be possible without your support on Patreon, so thank you all a ton. I keep hyping it up, but yes, I will be at Bristol tomorrow night filming a video. Expect that up later in the week. Should be a lot of fun. I'm extremely excited. I'll have another video up tomorrow morning, kind of previewing that, going over some of the recent news that I haven't had a chance to touch on just yet, so keep an eye out for that tomorrow morning. It's going to be a fun race tomorrow night. I'm extremely excited, if you can't tell. Uh, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching, everyone.